NDI Mini Dental Implants from 3M SB are designed to provide secure long-term stabilization of full or partial dentures and fixation of bridges. This program demonstrates the procedure for placing implants in the mandible to stabilize a lower denture. MDI Mini Implants are made from a titanium alloy threaded post for implantation into the bone. A range of transgingival collars and abutment heads with a replaceable securing O-ring are available to create a customized fit for dentures and bridges. MDI Mini Dental Implants can be placed in a dental operatory using local anesthetic. The implant procedure starts with a small pilot hole and does not require a full osteotomy. 3M SB provides surgical kits with all the components and tools necessary to start placing MDI mini dental implants in your practice. Most importantly, patients can often use their existing retrofitted denture immediately after the procedure. Successful outcomes begin with careful case planning and a properly screened patient, including a review of the patient's medical history. Selection of proper implant size is crucial to the long-term success of the procedure. Use radiographs and the radiograph sizing transparencies provided by 3M SB to determine the best implant type, diameter, and length. The appropriate implant diameter should be completely surrounded by at least 1.5 mm of bone and the length should engage bone for the entire threaded portion of the implant. The neck and apical tip of the implant should be supported by dense cortical bone when possible. The implants should be placed beginning at least 7 mm anterior to the mental foramen in the mandible and at least 5 mm apart if using metal housings. Follow patient selection criteria to evaluate the bone and soft tissue and utilize the implant template and catalog to select the appropriate implant size and style for the stabilization procedure. A stock of implants is recommended in case of planning error or other complications during the procedure. Each case is different, so ensure that you have the appropriate number of mini implants and materials on hand. A minimum of four mini implants should be used. A 3M SB representative can help make suggestions for the right stock for your practice. Prep the patient, following standard dental surgery guidelines, and administer anesthetics sufficient to numb the mandible and surrounding tissue. Gain clear access to the lower gum ridge, where the implants will enter the mandible. Mark the proposed site for each implant. Use sterile irrigation throughout the procedure. Use caution to orient each implant to the planned location in the mandible, 7 mm anterior to the mental foramen and at least 5 mm apart. If desired, or if mobile mucosa is present at your proposed implant site, Use the 1.5 mm tissue punch to remove tissue and gain access to the bone. Always place implants from the outside in. Use the 1.1 mm pilot drill bit by placing it at the entry point and lightly pumping at a speed of 1200 to 1500 RPM until the cortical plate is penetrated. Carefully advance the drill to create a pilot hole between one-third to one-half of the length of the threaded portion of the implant. Do not overextend the hole. The threaded implant is self-tapping and will use the non-drilled bone to provide immediate secure fixation of the implant. Remove the first implant from the vial using the attached cap or use sterile titanium pliers to hold the implant in order to remove the cap and immediately place the finger driver. Carefully align the implant and insert the tip into the pilot hole. Use the cap and turn clockwise with even downward pressure. The implant threads will engage bone. Remove the cap Attach the finger driver and drive the implant into the pilot opening. 
Advance the implant until you notice resistance to the clockwise turning of the implant. Remove the finger driver. Use the winged thumb driver to advance the implant deeper into the bone until increased resistance is felt. If the implant turns easily, there may not be sufficient bone density to securely place or immediately load the implant. An alternate size or use of a soft reline or discontinuation of the procedure should be considered. Use the graduated torque wrench to advance the implant fully into the bone. Position the wrench with the arrow on top pointing clockwise. Slowly and carefully make small turns to advance the implant. Advance until the abutment head is protruding slightly from the gingival tissue with no neck or thread portion visible. Even if you can advance the implant to place with the winged thumb wrench, the graduated torque wrench should be used for the last few turns so you have an accurate record of the implant stability at final placement. For immediate load use of the implant, check for a minimum of 35 newton centimeters torque. Do not exceed 45 newton centimeters torque. This could strip the threads within the bone pilot hole and cause bone damage or potentially deform the implant. The gingival and gum tissue should be directly against the implant neck, and suture should not be required to bring the gingiva up to the implant. Verify the implant depth and proceed to the next implant point and repeat the process. Align the implants as parallel as possible. The O-ring denture fixation system allows up to a 30-degree range of diagonal connection. However, the straighter the implants to each other, the better the connection and fit. In most cases, you can achieve 35 newton centimeters of insertion torque, and the denture can be immediately adapted to the implant abutments in a hard pickup procedure with the 3M Secure Hard Pickup Kit. First, determine the location for the metal housings to each implant in the denture, and create a hole or trough to accommodate the housings in the denture. In cases when new dentures are being fabricated, 3M SB offers implant analogs and impression copings for accurate housing positioning. Place a housing on each implant abutment to check position with a passive fit. The housings have a replaceable O-ring that provides compression fitting to the O-ball abutment. The design of the housing and O-ring allows for minor vertical movement of the housing on the implant. Then place the denture over the four housings to check for a good passive fit. You may relieve the denture border a few millimeters for added comfort. Adjust the openings for the housings in the denture if required for a good passive fit. Trim and place one blackout shim on each implant abutment to block out any undercuts. Remove, clean, and dry the denture tissue contact trough surface and apply a thin layer of adhesive to that surface. You can apply petroleum jelly to the exterior acrylic to avoid unintended bonding of the reline material. Next, extrude the hard pickup material into the trough of the denture and directly into the housing still passively attached to the abutments. Carefully insert the denture over the housings and have the patient apply normal biting pressure for 7 to 9 minutes until the hard pickup material has firmly set. This creates a firm fixation of the housings to the denture at the correct position for each abutment. Remove the denture and block out shims. Trim, fill, and polish the tissue contact surfaces to achieve a comfortable, firm fit. After final fitting, instruct the patient to leave the denture in place for 48 hours to prevent tissue overgrowth on the abutments. In most cases, the patient can resume eating and chewing. Soft foods are advisable for the first few days. Gingival tissue should heal relatively quickly and the implants will become integrated into the bone over the next few weeks for long-term, secure denture stabilization. 
If the torque at final positioning of the implant was below 35 newton centimeters, it is recommended to wait several weeks before eating hard foods to allow bone ingrowth around the implant. Using the soft reline method may be considered. Recheck the implant for stability after one or two weeks. Abutment and housing joints that may become looser over time from O-ring wear can be corrected by replacing the O-ring in the housing. The O-ring joint also provides flexure in the denture position while chewing, and potentially better sensation of the denture to the gum for more confident biting and chewing. For maxillary implant or mandibular implants that could not be torqued to approximately 35 newton centimeters, a soft reline protocol is recommended for pickup of the denture. Grind down the denture base at least one millimeter and relieve the tissue contact surface to accommodate the prosthetic heads of each implant. Roughen the surface with an acrylic burr. and degrease the surface with isopropyl alcohol. Apply a thin coat of adhesive. Extrude secure soft reline material onto the surface. Place the denture in the mouth and instruct the patient to apply normal bite pressure in centric occlusion. Allow seven minutes for the secure soft reline material to set. This will create abutment orifices aligned with the implants in the soft reline material. Remove the denture and trim the excess material with fine scissors or a surgical blade. Mix equal drops of glazing base and catalyst and use a brush to apply the mixture to the corresponding margins. For maxillary use, do not remove the palate during this stage. Instruct the patient to keep the denture in place for the first 48 hours after placement to prevent tissue overgrowth. After four to six months, the soft liner can be replaced with a hard pickup of the MDI metal housings to increase the level of retention. You can insert a round burr in the soft liner's obal orifice and mark the acrylic of the denture in order to facilitate housing location. All of the tools required to successfully perform MDI dental implants are available from your 3M Dental Clinical Support Representative.